Part 1 Overview from zero dollar to $1,000 per month. Can you become a business person that's also an expert coder? Knowing only a few things about you, I can confidently answer this question. Yes. Let me quickly share you share a personal st story with you. I vividly remember my first semester studying computer science more than 10 years ago. I knew almost nothing about coding. To be precise, I had never written a single line of code. The only insight I had about computer science was a piece of knowledge obtained from the only person in my environment who worked in the IT sector, my uncle, a professional software developer. He had quickly shown me the programming language Visual Basic and told me something that you may find helpful too. Learning a programming language is like learning a natural spoken language. It becomes easier the more languages you've already mastered. Two things underlie every single language, concepts and syntax. Concepts are hard, syntax is easy. But if you understand the concepts, you can directly build upon the concepts from an old language when studying a new language. Therefore, you should focus on the concept. Equipped with such high-level advice, I tried my luck as an upcoming computer scientist. In hindsight, I didn't even know what I was doing. I only chose computer science because I loved puzzles and riddles, and it didn't harm that the bar to get into the program was very low. Of course, people told me about the great job opportunities that came with becoming a computer scientist, but I didn't care about them at that point in my life. I had no clue what I was going to do with these new computer science skills I was working hard to acquire. A few years earlier, as a kid, I dreamed of becoming self-employed as a writer and starting my own business. For the people around me, this was weird because not a single person in my environment, in the one-hop distance, succeeded in their own business. Most of my family members were employees and skeptical about my self-employment dreams. All had seen my grandfather fall into bankruptcy by trying to create a highly leveraged business. My learnings, be careful taking on too much debt. debt. His case often served as a negative example to showcase the dangers of creating one's own business. What about you? Have you ever dreamed of becoming self-employed? More than half of Americans wanted to be their own boss and create their own business at one point in their lives. But many of them fear the risks associated with being self-employed. Like my grandfather, you may fear being forced to file for bankruptcy or losing everything. Debt increases the pressure to serve creditors in good and bad times and it will cost you peace of mind. Some people fear to take the big leap forward to get rid of their day job and to risk not being able to support themselves and their families. So they stick with their dreaded jobs paralyzed and unsatisfied with their current situation. If people try to force you into an either-or decision, why not aim for both? Why not stick with the day job and gradually build your business and even more critically grow your business experience on the side? This strategy is the one I followed and it worked. You can spend your sat Saturday mornings working on your side business and earn double income. You can learn both skills, technical and business expertise. You can make yourself more robust, valuable and knowledgeable. When the time comes, you may or may not decide to go into your side business full time. But are you good enough already? The fear of not being good enough is a limiting belief we all face and you must get rid of it. Only by risking not being good enough to, do you have the chance to actually become good enough. If you have any ambition, you must get rid of this fear ASAP. So let me quickly finish my small anecdote. I started as nobody in computer science. Everyone in my environment doubted that I could become successful in business. Fast forward 10 years and I finished my computer science degree and my four year doctoral research program. At the time of writing, I am self-employed in the Python coding space for almost a year. Note from the author, it's now almost two years. Earning a full-time income and I don't work for less than $100 per hour. As a result, I work less and earn more. And I've got plenty of time to read Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings with my two young kids. I'm studying computer science every day, just for fun, on my quest for continuous improvement and can afford everything I need to, I need to live a great and satisfying life. I tell you this because I truly believe that becoming self-employed on the side was one of the best decisions I ever made. Yes, I had to overcome a lot of objections, doubt and fears. 
But by doing it, I created a thriving side business and used my growing experience in my real job to become more valuable as an employee. In the following chapter, I'd like to share some of my most significant insights with you to save you from working on the wrong things for weeks, if not months. Your time truly is your most valuable asset, especially if you decide to become self-employed. Every unit of time passes and never comes back. Money is plentiful and time is limited. Don't let all of those opportunities pass. You know that it doesn't become easier to build your own business. The best time to start your own business was 10 years ago, in which case you'd now have a profitable freelancing business. The second best time is now. So why not start your own side business as a Python programmer? Side hustling Python programmers have zero debt list risks, zero liquidity risks and zero downsides. Yet there's tremendous upside potential towards financial safety and stability. And it's a small step towards living a good life. Read the upcoming expert tips. If you see one that you can apply today, do it. Revisit these ex expert tips from time to time. Each time you read over the list, you'll find another expert tip that will help you grow your business. You don't have to follow each expert secret to the letter and you don't have to read the whole thing. Just use it as a source of inspiration for how to increase the value of your business today. If the expert secrets can accomplish just that, you will already have a positive return on your invest invested time and money. If you need even more guidance, visit the Finkster Python Freelancer course. Again, you can find all material um, to the book um, at the location python-freelancer.com. Chapter 3. Expert Secret. Low risk, high gain. More than 50% of people in America dream of being their own boss by becoming self-employed. But many people have limiting beliefs regarding becoming self-employed. They fear illiquidity and even bankruptcy. They fear creating something new in their life and or being dependent on other people like clients or co-founders. They fear telling their bosses, co-workers or families that they have created their own businesses. They fear not being good enough to charge money. This fear is dangerous because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy when you avoid new things. The lack of exploration and experience will prevent you from becoming good enough in the first place. The only way out is to try new things, is to try the things you fear and improve as you go. Get rid of this fear as soon as possible if you have any ambition in life. Let's assume that you are currently working as an employee in your primary job. You may also be a computer science student and you're thinking of building your own business in the mid or long term. What's the best time to start a business? The answer is many years ago. The second best time is now. If you want to start your own business at any point in your life, you should start it now. It doesn't matter what else you are doing, even if you work most of the time in your primary job. I don't recommend that you get rid of your main job and go all in right away. Instead, a much better way of becoming self-employed is to work part-time on your business. Maybe you decide to work for 5 to 10 hours every Saturday. Over time, you'll be able to create a very sustainable, robust and long-term side business. You are very robust because even if there are market changes and you lose your job, you've something to fall back on. You can always go back to the business and do more of what already works, now full time. Or if the business fails, you still have the job that protects you in this case. But you should expect that neither the business nor the job fails. They will coexist and there will even be synergies where one feeds the other. For example, when working as a doctoral researcher at university, I would also write blog articles about my research topics, which was great for my main job and great for my side business as a Python freelancer. As a result, you'll earn more, save more and learn more. Financial st stability is a massive advantages, advantage for you as a small business owner because you can think long term. The job brings in a steady stream of income while you can build a robust, stable, long term asset, the business. For example, you can write a book, give courses, steadily grow your online community and grow your client base and find testimonials. You can also write blog articles. Many people wrongly believe that this is not a profitable use of their time. But if you write a blog article now, it will take months to rank and then bring in a consistent flow of traffic month after month. You can then start selling stuff on your website or monetize your traffic with ads, which is truly passive income. Blogging is a long-term strategy. 
You can even go for businesses with high entry barriers because you have an unfair advantage. You are not dependent on your business. So you can try out things and experiment until something works. For example, you could start long-term code projects just for fun that don't have to show a positive return on investment for a long time. Most new market participants need to make money quickly. That's their heaviest liability. They cannot take the long-term perspective. But you can afford to do so because you work on your business on the side. You can grow your business by reinvesting the cash it earns because you don't depend on it. That's, that's how I created the things.com platform for learning Python. I could think long term. It took me years to build. I wrote everything from scratch in Python. It was, it was tedious, but I had money coming in working as a researcher in computer science. There was a decent entry barrier because new market participants couldn't invest a lot of time creating new platforms. They were running out of money. If they had to pay a team of developers, they'd often run out of money faster. In summary, if you are thinking about creating your own business, don't wait, start now. Think radically long term. An excellent way of creating a side business is to become a Python freelancer. You can learn the business side of things, become better, build your reputation and knowledge and earn good money proportionally to the time invested. You can then build upon your new skills to attract better and better clients, all while growing your skills. Action steps. Answer the following questions in written form. What are your life goals? And this is critical note from the author <laughs> this is critical do it now answer this question now what are your life goals you cannot perform without knowing your goals so write it down now end of author's note how much monthly income will you need to fund your dream life how much will you earn from your job your side freelancing venture your passive income streams and your investments Create a simple spreadsheet answering the previous questions for each of the next 10 years. Chapter 4. Expert secret. Gain an unfair advantage. Do you know how much money you currently earn? An average employee works 1811 hours per year. As an employee, it is tough to earn more than $90,000. In fact, the median wage of all workers in the US is $24 per hour. For example, if you are a student, you are earning f minus $4 per hour. School teachers earn $37 per hour. You can see this in figure 4.1 and I will also add the figures or links to the blog articles where you can find the figures to the on online resource section at python-freelancer.com. If you push yourself very hard and become an extremely skilled employee, you might become a university professor with a yearly salary of $98,423 or $54 per hour. First, you know your hourly wage. Second, improve it. So how will I help you increase your value to the marketplace? First, by creating a new high income skill for you, Python development. Second, by showing you how and why to switch the road from being a full-time employee to being at least part-time self-employed. In figure 4.2, you can see the income distribution of Python freelancers. The median wage of a Python freelancer is $51. Let me repeat this. The average Python freelancer earns $51 per hour. In other words, an ordinary self-employed Python freelancer easily reaches the university professor's income level. Think about this. Can you become a university professor? It's totally up to you to answer this question, but you can undoubtedly become an average skilled Python freelancer, can't you? So uh, figure 4.2, the figure shows the income distribution of Python freelancers, relative frequency, based on various data sources. An important observation is that your skills are always valuable, even if you're relatively untrained. The best strategy is to start now and improve your hourly rate over time as you gain more and more practical experience. Action steps. When and how do you plan to become self-employed? Can you become self-employed on the side? Answer those questions. In written form it's best. Chapter 5. Expert secret. Earning considerations. As a Python freelancer, 
As a Python developer, you can expect to earn between $10 and $80 per hour with an average salary of $51. I know the variation of earning potential is high, but so is the quality of the Python freelancers in the wild. Take the average salary as a starting point and add plus minus 50% to account for your expertise level. The key takeaway is that intermediate level Python freelancers today earn six figures easily. So we have a $100,000 yearly cross income. If you work on the site, let's make it eight hours each Saturday, you will earn $400 per extra per, per week or $1,600 per month before taxes. Your hourly rate will be slightly lower because you have to invest time finding freelance, freelancing clients up to 20% of your total time. Action steps, write down how many hours you can invest per week, write down your goal hourly rate. And you can download uh, this worksheet number one as PDF to complete the action steps at um, python-freelancer.com.